Coming up today on That LTD Life, AppSumo is back at it again with another deal of the day. Today, we're looking at Zero Work. This is a no-code platform to automate all of your busy work so that you don't have to do any work. Well, actually, the truth is there's going to be quite a bit of work up front. Once you learn the platform, however, it's going to take care of all of your busy manual tasks, possibly even replace an employee or two. Now, I'm going to show you how Zero Work operates inside of this video, but I want to explain what the deal of the day is and how you can get it. Now, first of all, there are only 150 codes available at this price that you see right here. Now, truth be told with Zero Work, there are two plans. There's $89 and Tier 2 at $209, which gives you unlimited task bots. But only the first 150 people to purchase today will get that price. So if you're watching this video and you already know that you want Zero Work, click my link in the description, head over there and grab it right away. Then come back here and I'll teach you a little bit about how to use it. By the way, if you do happen to grab the deal of the day and you get the good pricing, the first 150 codes, definitely leave me a comment down below. I want to know how many of you out there actually can get this good price. Okay, onward to the platform. Now we will go in and actually build something with zero work. But first, I want to set the stage. What does this thing actually do? Because without any context, it can be a little bit overwhelming and difficult to understand. So as you can see here, it says automate repetitive tasks without code. And then it says web scraping, lead generation, and social media tasks. So there's absolutely no limit to what you can do with this tool. Your creativity and imagination is really your only barrier. Kind of one of the reasons we need to go through this part of the website is that it is so open-ended and what you decide to do with it is really based on what your business needs. So we can scrape data from platforms like Google Maps, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Amazon, all of that. It's not limited to those platforms. Those are just some big ones, so they put them on their website. Now, what kind of data can you get? Well, you can get enriched data. So very, very specific here. You can get Twitter profile links. If you want to get maybe the occupation of someone on LinkedIn, you can grab the very specific items on a profile page that you want to get. And of course, once you have that data, you can transform it. You can split it, you know, first name and last name. You can filter out certain words. You can do whatever you need to do to get the data into a format that works for you. From there, of course, we can do web interactions. You can like comments, you can reply to things. And for that, you can use AI to help generate the responses so you don't need to be there and manually inputting things. Okay, so that's what Zero Work does. Now, how does it do it? It does it with something they call a task bot. So we're gonna create a task bot in this video, but I do wanna point out that it will not be an in-depth course on it. There is a lot of training available from their founder, really, really high quality stuff. Definitely recommend getting started with their quick start video crash course. It'll tell you just about everything you need to know to really get the fundamentals of the platform in just around an hour or so. So set aside some time to learn this platform. It's not going to be one of those tools that you just turn on, click a few buttons, and then everything is working perfectly. It takes a little bit of skill, but once you develop that skill, it's gonna literally give you many hours of your life back. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our task bot here. I'll kind of just walk you through the fundamentals. So what I want to do is I'm going to start selling things on Amazon, hypothetically. And I want to do some research about what's already on Amazon. So I'm going to start gathering up some product listings. So for this, I actually want to visit Amazon. So I'm going to open up a link. And I'll just enter in Amazon.com. I'll hit save. And now if I ran my task bot, click this button up here, of course, it would open up the web browser. But we're going to run into a problem. Amazon thinks I'm a bot because I kind of am, right? So we need to fool Amazon to thinking that we're human. To do this, we're going to use a third-party Chrome extension. It's called the Cookie Editor. I've already got it installed right here. This is not part of Zero Work, but they talk about it in their training, and it seems to work really well. So what you do here, and this works on Amazon or any other website that you need to log in to get access to, is you visit the site, log in as yourself, and then click on the Cookie Editor Chrome extension and choose the export button down here. And we're going to export it as a JSON file. Now back over in zero work, I'm going to click on the gear icon and then just paste in the result inside of this cookie window here. Okay. I've added in my cookies. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my task bot up here. I don't like the generated name. I'll call it the Amazon product scraper. All right. Everything's looking good. I could test this out by just clicking the run button again. It's going to pop open Amazon in a giant Chrome browser here. You can't see everything. It opens up in full screen. I'm not recording my whole screen, but you can see this time it logged in. It didn't give me a bot error. So success. 
All right, so I can open up an Amazon browser. Big whoop. Now, what if we actually want to navigate around the screen? Well, for that, we can actually use keyboard commands, right? So I don't know if you know this, but when you're on any website, if you press the tab key, it moves you around the page. So in this case, I wanna to get to this search bar because I wanna perform a search. Now I'm gonna search for RC cars and I can do that right here. So I could just type in RC cars, right? Well, how can I automate this entire process? Well, it turns out I actually hit the tab key 10 times. So I'm gonna enter that in over on zero work. So to get the tabs in, I'm gonna choose their keyboard action element over here and just drop it onto my canvas. I'll give it a name like go to search. And then in this window right here, I'm just gonna hit the tab key time 10 times. All right, there we go. I'm gonna save this and we'll just connect up these nodes. Now I can move everything on canvas, keep it nice and organized. Now, once I'm on that search bar, of course I need to type. For this, I will do insert text or data and I'll drop this right in and I'm gonna enter in my search term, which is RC cars. I'll go ahead and save this. Now notice I can change the typing speed between fast, average, and slow if you wanna make sure that you're not dinged as a bot. I think I'm gonna leave it at fast. I'll go ahead and move this up on the canvas and connect these two up. Now what happens after you type your search result? Of course, you've gotta press the return key. Now I know this is all very basic fundamental stuff that you might not want to automate, but we are laying the foundation so that you can do more powerful things in the future. Now. Hold tight, let's go ahead and click the return key. We'll go back to our keyboard action widget here, dump that in. I'll call this one submit search and just press return, hit save, connect up our nodes. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and test this out at this point because we should have a functioning task bot that can open Amazon, go to the search, enter a search term, and then hit submit so we actually get some search results. Let's go ahead and run this. Here it comes. And it's in the search, searching for RC cars, it returned, we got results, and then it closed right away because there's nothing else for it to do. How do I actually scrape some data off of those search results? Well, to do this, it's going to involve a little bit of CSS, but don't worry, there's a Chrome extension for that. And it's also going to involve a few modules here inside of Zero Work. Now, to get started, I wanna have a place to save my data to. There are multiple options here. If I go over to the left-hand sidebar and click the little hamburger icon, I can save my data to a table. And when I hit add new table, I can either create the table right here in Zero Work, or I could export it to a Google Sheet, which might be beneficial to you, especially if you have third parties that you want to access the data. Let's say you're sharing this information. Well, Google Sheet might be the easiest option. But for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose Zero Work table right now. I'll give the table a title of RC cars. I'm giving the table a title and we're doing work in zero work. It, this whole video is a tongue twister. All right, I've added in three columns to my table here. We've got image URL, product title, and price. Now I could get as specific as I want, but just to get us going, those are the three elements I wanna capture from Amazon. So I'm gonna create my table. Remember, this is just my, my storage zone. This is where all of the data will eventually end up. So nothing is in there now. It's completely blank, as you can see. I'll close out of this, and now we need to actually get the data. Now to get started with this, I'm gonna set up a loop. They call it a start repeat module here. I'll drop this in. It'll allow me to go through multiple items on the same page. I'm just gonna choose standard here, and I'll set the number of repetitions to 12. I think it's uh, probably about 12 on each page. Now I wanna capture multiple items. I don't wanna just get one result. So to do this, I'm going to add a loop. This is the start repeat loop right here. I can just drop it right on my canvas. I'm gonna choose standard as the type, and then I can set up the number of items I want to capture. Now you can have it just grab absolutely everything on the page, and that's totally fine. But to get started and to make sure it's working, I'm just gonna set a limit here of 10 items. All right, we'll hit save. I've connected this up to my workflow. And next I need to save some web data. So I'm gonna add in a bunch of these cards here. We'll, we'll go ahead and configure them afterwards, but we need three of these, save web element. I'm just gonna drop them in. We'll connect them all up. I'm gonna go ahead and label them. So get image URL, get product title. You don't have to be this particular, but I like to see what's going on. And get price is the last one. Okay, now I'm gonna open up one of these and we can look what it's asking for. It's asking for a CSS or XPath selector. What this means is we need to tell it where to find the information on the page. Now, don't worry about this. It's not really that bad. 
Just like we had a cookie editor Chrome extension, there is the copy CSS selector extension as well. Totally free, go ahead and add this to your browser. Now with that extension enabled, go to the results page and then right click on an element that you want to capture. So I'll right click on this image right here and choose copy CSS selector. Back over in zero work, make sure you're on the right web element and paste that in. Now often this extension will work, but I can tell in this scenario, it's not going to because this is very specific. This selector is specific to the product we were looking at. And we don't want to be too specific here because we need to be able to iterate through the entire web page. So we need to simplify this. Now, maybe you're a developer and you can go and look at the code on the page and find a CSS selector that won't be any issue. However, if you're not, well, then we have AI to help us out. Here's what I recommend doing if you're not a developer. Well, you'll still need to use developer tools in your browser. So make sure you get those turned on. If you don't know how, just Google it. It's usually a check mark or a box in whatever browser you're using. Now I'm gonna right click and open up the inspect option here. I'm gonna choose the little arrow over here that lets me select different elements on the screen. And what I wanna do is actually grab this entire card. All right, there we go, I've got it. So once that's selected, I can see the bit of code over here. And I'll just move my mouse to make sure I get the right area. All right, so if I'm up here, I'm too high, but if I'm on this one, I've got the entire area. Then I'm gonna right click and just use copy element. Now I'm over in Claude and you could use any LLM you want, but I've got a prompt. I'll link to it in the description of this video where you can go ahead and use this prompt, update a few little placeholders, and then your AI of choice can output the selectors that you can then just easily insert into zero work. So here's how it works. I've got the prompt. I'm gonna go right here and just tell it what I want. So it gives examples like product title, price, and image URL. I'm gonna use basically those exact ones. And then it says, here's the HTML code I'm working with. I'm gonna paste in that code that I got before. It's a little too big for Claude, so it goes down below as an attachment. That's totally fine. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. And here we go, Claude is going to output the selectors for me. There they are, they look perfect. I can easily grab them and put them over into zero work. Okay, so the first one cloud output was the product title. So I'm gonna open this up and I will paste in the selector here. Now we are almost done, but there is actually one more element we have to add. In order to go through every element on the page, so not just sticking with the very first RC car that we find, we actually need to loop through them. So I'm just gonna add this little bit of code here. You can copy and paste the same exact snippet and that's gonna go through each item inside of, in this case, Amazon, but it would work you know, if you're on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever you are that has a long list of outputs, this will cycle through those outputs. So I'm gonna save the title. Next, it gave me the image, so I will enter that in, and I'm gonna use that exact same little snippet to cycle through the image URLs. And finally, the price. And you guessed it, I need to add that snippet in as well. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I just need to clarify where that data will go. So I'm gonna open up each one of these elements one more time. Of course, I could have done it initially with the first setup, but down here where it says save to, I'm gonna go ahead and choose my table that I created, RC cars, and then I'll choose the corresponding column, image URL, and hit save. Then we'll repeat this for the other two items. Product title, save, and price, save. Okay, our taskbot is looking pretty good to me. I am ready to run it. Let's go ahead and click the run button. And here we go. All right, it's fired up Amazon. It's gonna perform the search. Now I should add that we don't actually have to have it search. We could just put in the URL of the search results page. That would work good. All right, so it looks like everything ran, but let's go ahead and check out our table. Oh, it looks like it got most everything, but the image URL did not pull in. All right, no problem, we can troubleshoot. So I'm gonna close this out and let's go ahead and check out the image URL section. Open this up and right away, I see what I did. There is the option to save the information that it grabs as text, but really this is not text. This is an image file URL. So I need to choose that option. The other options, by the way, are things like links, custom attributes, or HTML. But I definitely want an image file URL here. That's the whole name of the column. So. I'm going to save this. I can delete out my existing data, by the way, because if I run this again, it will add 10 more entries. They'll be the same ones, but uh, it will have an image field the second time. So I'm gonna delete all of this data. We'll close this out and just run our automation one more time.
Here it goes. All right, everything is all done. Let's go check out our table again. There we go, we got our images and I can click through them and they are all the right images for each product. Yeah, looking good. Okay, so those are the fundamentals of using zero work. Now I'll mention a few other little things here, like you can schedule these to run at a certain time each day. There's a scheduling option right here. You can run every day on specific days of the week, set your specific time you want it to run, and off you go, your scraping or whatever you're doing takes place without any intervention at all. Also, we should mention that you can share task bots. There's a share icon right up here. If you want to share this with a specific user or just create a general sharing link, you can do that as well. Overall, there are a lot of different elements here, so there's a lot to learn about for sure. If you're a developer, you'll really enjoy this most likely. If you're not a developer, you'll probably enjoy it even more once you get going because you don't actually have to learn to code all this stuff. You can just drag and drop blocks in and get the tasks done. So there is your introduction to Zero Work. I hope it was helpful and you learned a little bit about this very powerful platform. Zero Work is definitely the type of tool that probably will never get into the millions and millions and millions of users, but I feel like the niche audience that will utilize it will probably be a few steps ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Zero Work a 7.9. If you have any questions about Zero Work or you just wanna leave me a message, drop me a comment down below. If you wanna grab your own copy of Zero Work, of course, I've got my link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Dave and I'll see you in the next review.